Hey guys, it's me, it's me, it's May December, it's me, and I'm back again with another uh, review, and this time it's a 1980s Fade to Black, which stars Dennis Christopher, Tim Thomason, Gwyn Guilford, and Linda Kerridge. Now this movie I saw on the In Search of Darkness documentary that came out a year or two ago, and I was like, well, I've never seen this movie before, and it turns out it's a horror comedy, but I think the comedy is not, like, right in your face. But it is at the same time. Like, there are bits where you're like, this is too funny to be not comedy. And other bits where you're like, this is not meant to be comedy. This bit, but it's really funny. You know. So, it's about a guy called Eric Binford, who was played by Dennis Christopher. And in this, he is this socially awkward character who works for this company that moves uh, movie cassettes and film reels and all sorts of stuff. And he has an aunt that he lives with who's very aggressive with him and really, really puts him down and tells him he's useless. And, you know, he's got this kind of awkward, kind of weird, kind of nerdy, kind of 80s nerdy, this is. And, uh, you know, it's got this, it's hard to explain. Like, all he does is watch movies and he's obsessed with movies. He works in a movie place. He watches movies all night. And you can just see that he's got no friends and he's completely isolated in so many ways, you know, because he's got an abusive auntie, he's abused at work, he's abused everywhere he goes. So he uh, goes to a diner and ends up seeing this girl who's called Marion O'Connor. Now, when he sees her, he has this big imagination mark where he believes that she's Marion Monroe. And as a, she's singing to him and all sorts of stuff. And then when he gets back to reality, he starts asking her questions like, oh, what did you, what was the film you watched with this person in this film? Because he thinks she's Marilyn Monroe. <coughs> and she's like, uh, and he's like, I'll give you a hint. Uh, it's a green slimy creature. So she goes, Frankenstein, eh, eh. the wolf man. Eh, eh. And he goes, oh. The creature from the Black Lagoon. Anyway, she asks him for a ride back to work. And he takes her back to work. And then he goes, I'll see you in the movies. Because he thinks that she's my own So she goes, you want to take me to the movies? And he goes, okay, yeah. And she goes, when? And he goes, tonight. Well, he goes back home. And his auntie puts him down. And he starts talking like a gangster from the 1930s. Like a James Cagney um, character. Yeah, and <laughs> and dresses up, and he goes to a date, and she doesn't turn up. So he gets upset, uh, a prostitute basically threatens him, and then he goes home and watches movies in his isolated situation again, in his underwear, and uh, yeah, suit, suit jacket. Yeah, and uh, he, his auntie comes in in a wheelchair, and she basically says to him, I've had enough of all this, get the stuff out of here, goodbye, and basically knocks over his projection, where on the screen, just before she does it, a woman in a wheelchair is pushed down the stairs, and she's in a wheelchair, right, <clears throat> so this is where he flips, and he's like, Saranara, bitch, and he pushes her down the stairs and kills her, right, now, you might go, you're ruining this for me, I'm not ruining any more of it, I'm just doing the setup, right, so at this point, as she falls downstairs, he goes, he does this, he goes, oh, ooh, ooh, and you're like, okay, he goes in, then he gets upset, right, and then bit by bit throughout the movie, he starts killing people, but he feels wronged him throughout the movie, and I think the whole attraction of this movie is what he does, he dresses up as different characters from movies, so for instance, he'll dress up as Dracula, He'll dress up as the mummy. He'll dress up as all sorts of different characters from the movies. Like, at one point, he dresses up as a gangster, you know, to kill people. And the kills are not that great. <coughs> they really aren't. Like, for instance, when he's Dracula, he's basically just chasing somebody, and that's it, right? Uh, but it's kind of interesting, his relationship, because as he gets more and more unstable, <laughs> as he gets more and more unstable, he he slowly starts becoming a different person, right? 
And with this comes the personality disorder that I believe he got from watching all these movies, you know. Because I believe if you sat there and you watched movies all day and all night, your whole life, without any real conversation with anybody, right, it's not going to affect your mind in like, it's, I'm going to go kill people. But I can see why if somebody was mentally unstable, they might, for instance, talk to themselves as these characters or have this thing. You know, I mean, we all quote famous movies. We all have these moments where we're like, I do not know this. And you quote it and you say it, you know. And sometimes we kind of want to be those characters. Well, in this case, Eric Binford wants to be these characters. And at one point, he changes his whole name and all sorts of stuff. Now, there's great references to famous uh, gangsters of the past and gangster uh, characters like James Cagney. And there's uh, great you know, makeup effects for, like, the monsters and all this. And it's a really okay film. And that said, <coughs> what isn't good is when he starts really cheesing it up. And there were parts of it where he really cheesed his thing up. But it doesn't feel too cheesy, but it feels really cheesy. Like, there's moments where he'll be like, oh, you want to come with me, you see? Oh, why don't you go up? and do this. Oh, you can't take this thing away from me. No. And you're like, oh dear. You know. But it was a film from 1980. And to be honest with you, it's an okay film. I mean, for me, I liked it. But I don't think I could watch it again anytime soon. Because it feels like, it feels like one of those movies where you're just watching it to see where it ends up. And when you get to the ending, you're kind of like, is that it? Is that how this film ends? Uh, because it seems a little bit over the top, you know. I mean, I kind of expected it to end and him be like, oh, I have just woke up. It was all a dream. It was all in my head. You know, something like that because of all the different characters. But it wasn't. He, <coughs> he ends up just turning into this person and doing all these things. Yeah. Now, the two other characters, played by Tim Thomason and Gwyn Guilford, who are Officer Ang Oshinpol and Dr. Jerry Moriarty, are absolutely useless in the movie, right? So, Dr. Jerry Moriarty, right, he is supposed to be this sort of psychologist, doctor, and Officer Ang Oshinpol is supposed to be this police officer that they set with him. But within the first few minutes, she's banging him. Right, and then when they get to these bits where they're supposed to be doing anything, they're like this. Oh, I think there's something wrong with him. Oh, what should we do? Oh, could we do this? Could we do that? Hmm. Oh, don't show. You know, very worthless, very useless. I would not like to see these characters again. Personally, I feel like they should have been taken out of the film. Now, as for been for the game. I feel like the storyline kind of went a bit too far. Like, there's multiple times where he gets away with doing something where he should have been caught. And then you kind of sit there going, never really dragging this film out. And now on 42 minutes, you feel like it should have been maybe 90 minutes. But I can't really complain that much. I mean, from 1980, it's a decent film. I definitely probably uh, recommend giving it one time watch. If you really like it, then obviously watch it again. Me, I watched it the first time, and I probably won't watch it again for another 10 years, probably, because I feel like it's one of those films where you watch it just because you want to know what happens next. But once you know what happens next, you go, oh, okay, this is where this happens. That's where this happens. Okay, yeah, I don't need to see this again. But I will say, I really like the mummy costume in the movie. I thought it was pretty good. Now, my rating, three out of five stars. Worth a watch. If you watched already, let me know what you think down below. And if you haven't, give it a watch and then let me know what you think of it. So as always, guys, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. Bye, guys.